The mother guys ain't got no style. We know what's up before we go there. This is the run down. This is the run down. If you ain't know the deal, I bet you know now. This is the fans' voice. You hear them both cams. This what the people need and what they want now. What's going down, people? It's your homie CL, and we back live on the Rundown South podcast. Gotta know that. And I'd like to thank you for joining me. However, you're joining me, I do appreciate it. we coming to you live straight from ATL, Georgia. And today I got the homie Keith Nelson Jr. back on the line to help me run down some of the trending topics and big picture things that we have on our mind. So, what's happening, Keith? Yeah, no, man. Mayhem and, co- and co- chaos is what's going on right now, CL. Yes, yeah, so. Games again. Yeah. Oh, man. It's a lot. And real quick, I'm just going to let them, let everybody know what we're going to do today during the pod. So we're going we're gonna to run down the Nicki Minaj saga. That's what we're just going to mm-hmm. call it for right now. Uh, you brought up something interesting about uh, some comments that Buster Rounds made about hip hop making a union, which I, yeah, you know, seems like a pretty good idea. And then we're going to introduce a new segment called shit that I miss where <laughs> we're going to go through recent things and not so recent things. And I'm going to talk about why they're interesting and why they probably should be covered a little bit more. So, uh, shit, before we get going in, man, what's, what's good with you? You know, man, I'm doing, I'm doing good right now. Uh, preparing for a trip to Tel Aviv. Um, hmm. My boy is getting married, so I'm heading out there. So I'm trying to figure out one how to get Wi-Fi. Two, because <laughs> <laughs> that fucking Roman charge is gonna be crazy. And just going out there. But in terms of writing professionally, oh man, there's some there's some great things happening. There's some really great things. I went to this is gonna be real quick. I went to the NBA 2K League first ever playoffs. And what the NBA 2K League is, real quick, is that the NBA and a couple of te- and 17 teams picked 102 players to form a six to form six um, player teams, and they just battled it out for tournaments through the season. And in the play, and it sounds like the nerdiest thing ever. And even I was like, only I'm gonna like it because I like 2K. I went to one of those games. Yo, they, these people are. Intense. Yes. It's intense. It's like it, it, picture any two K game you've ever played <laughs> with your boy that got that went over the top and somebody mama got that, that that called out and then times that by like the precision of a fucking Kobe Bryant, the precision of a play like, like these guys are <laughs> like Adam Silver calls them athletes because right. they are athletes. And also it, 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 it's gonna be six players that get at least 65k you know that's I mean? good money yeah, right man. there that's good money so i wrote about that for the shadow league it should be out um when you when you hear this it should be out but it's you know that's probably one of my favorite pieces i also did a piece with this artist named aaron a r&b artist who has a very interesting perspective he has an album out called orphan and he became an orphan at 15 when his mother died and he said that was the moment that changed him to an artist because that was when he stopped writing about bullshit and started writing about his truth and I found that to be like, yo, that's something we really hear is orphans in the in the music industry. Nobody really paints it that way. Orphans are always painted as like forgotten and kids and just like you know unworthy to a certain a certain degree. And he's trying to flip that. So that's that's out right now on hip hop and more. And I got some some article series coming out for, for Revolt and some stuff coming out for Vibe magazines. Okay, player two. So. You know, I'm out here working, man. Okay, working. man, I see you out there, man. I'm working, bro. You know, trying to get it out here, working the uh, freelance scene. See, I'm trying to get that chicken, bro. Come on. Already, man. So, yeah, y'all just be on the lookout. Look for all them, them good pieces. Give it a read, retweet, click, you know, all that good stuff. Show my boy Keith some love. All at me. All right, man, let's, let's get right into it, dog. I have been waiting for this moment. I saw it coming. I talked about it. How many podcasts ago I said Nicki Minaj would never make a classic album and she gonna have some problems real soon. Like I've been saying this shit. Facts. <clears throat> so 
You know, I, I ain't gonna get no credit because we ain't on, you know, ESPN or Complex <laughs> or, you know, don't any, matter. Of, any of these. It don't matter, but it's on record. Okay. Uh, but needless to say, we are in the midst of a Nicki Minaj meltdown. Um, I'm not sure if she, if she has anything going on personally that might be affecting what's going on with her right now. Um, but I do feel some real insecurity about her position in the game and her ability to retain relevance without doing stuff. Cause right now she's coming out as like Nikki sent, you know, she's just getting, <laughs> getting every corner she can to keep her name like popping, jumping right mm -hmm. on Travis back, Kylie Jenner back, you know, the, the six, nine, doing stuff that's really like off the chain and it's 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 really not what we're looking for from Nikki. You know, we just wanted some jams. And unfortunately none of her music jams. So I don't know man, what do you think uh I guess with the whole Travis Scott, Kylie Jenner quote unquote beef over her I guess over his record sales and the fact that she can't sell because her music's not jamming. I almost, I was this close. You can't see my fingers, but my fingers are very close together. I was this close to believe in Nicki Minaj when she said that she's only doing this because there's some sort of concerted effort behind the scenes to take her down and prop up the other artists. And like, I... I almost believe it because that happens. That kind of stuff really does happen. People it's come together. A, a market correction for those. Yeah, of you market who are correction. Not yes, very, very astute of you to say that. Um, it's it's how things shift. They were trying to do with Drake. They were trying to get Drake out of here with the whole Meek Mill thing. That's how they got the reference track. It didn't come from the from the fairy godmother. It came, it came from people in DJ Drama's camp. So they were trying to get him out of there. It's happened before with other artists too. I mean, artists have have tried. And I mean, record labels have made it so that if you take one artist out, you can bring five other artists in. You right. take one Drake out, all those streams are going to have to go somewhere. All right. that money guy goes somewhere, and you can bring it. So I, I almost believed her until, oh my, even before this, I thought she was a little bit off kilter and kind of like being a salopus. But when she started to get angry that Travis Scott was about to have the number one album, that's when I was like, Okay, this has nothing to do. Or it doesn't. It's mostly nothing. not about the behind the scenes thing. It's about you having years before this whole like they try to shut me up. When you first started, since the moment you started, Nikki's brand has been one of three things. Mm -hmm. And to me, the main thing to me has been I'm gonna make sure you know these stats. That's why the whole Nikki Scent comparison is, is, is brilliant because she's from the school of fifty yeah. of the if you can't if you can't beat them with the content, beat them with the perception. So if he's all like, "Yo, man, like I'm not gonna talk about my album, but I will talk about how like because my because I'm who I am, I can be number ten on iTunes. I'll show you that I'm number one on iTunes." 20 minutes after it comes out, knowing that iTunes refreshes pretty regularly and that number one is just because it just came out. But I'll show you that. Right. I'll tell you I'm number one in 89 countries. I'm not going to list countries, list countries, but I'll let you know. And she's done this before this beef, before the meltdown. She did this her whole career. So then when it came time to it, and I really think she thought that, I, I, think, she, I think she thought that and correctly so, because this is true. In this day and age where streams matter, because what streams are is streams does not dictate interest. Streams, or, or no, streams is not, is not, um, is not determinant of quality. It's determinant of interest. Correct. Whereas if somebody bought your album and they spent $15 on that CD, they like your ass. Yes. Nobody hate buying a CD. But you can go back and be like, it's Nikki Adams, trash. Let me listen to it. And she thought, I believe so, that if I cause it a, a, enough stir, they, one, won't forget about me. Two, I will reestablish myself into this spot of the number one female artist. And three, 
I'll use that hate train to power more streams to get my ass where I need to be, the number one slot. Yes. And then it and then it did it happen. So then she had to do the one thing she know, she's been doing this whole thing, acting like some sort of conspiracy theorist. You can't <laughs> That's the worst. as a clothes and an album and then say you're number one. What? That can't happen. No she way. She wasn't saying that to Jay-Z. Where are my barbs at? Got, yo, and she's talking about how it's not, it's not right for the industry and that artists should be uh, grateful for her to bring that up. She wasn't mentioning that when Jay-Z did the whole Samsung deal with, with Manna Carter. She wasn't saying that when Jay-Z did the whole thing with 444 when, she, when he put that shit, you know, the free download, put it on title. Yep. She didn't say that with, with Rihanna. Yeah, million, she, million. Um, <laughs> No, there's so many artists that did this stuff. They did exactly yeah. what Travis did, which is circumvent the rules. Because we're, we're in a wild, wild west where the record labels are, are figuring out the rules now. So you can go in there and get your gold. Just like in the wild, wild west. When there's no rules, you can do whatever the fuck you want. So when now that it, it's that opening, and I feel like she missed a big gap of it. Because she hasn't had an album in four years. So she hasn't had an album during... This is her first album during the, the mature streaming era. During the mature you know, bundles of albums. Right. So then when she, so then when I'm looking at it now, I'm like, yo, you have no basis to say anything you're saying because what Travis is doing is right. Exactly. And then, he, he, and, he yeah. and the thing about what Travis is doing and when she referenced the t-shirts, that's what artists do. If he has a bunch of like big selling t-shirts and they're helping him push album streams. Then that's what mm-hmm. the game is. Apparently Travis Scott didn't knows what he's doing. And she did the same thing. That's the crazy shit. That's the, she did yeah. the same thing. She selling, she sold a subscription and a title, a hoodie, I think, and her album for $5. You tell me where you yeah. can get a subscription to title a hoodie and a new album for $5. $5, like, Yo, you, yeah, that, you, that, that's you're doing than, this thing. That's, that's better than two for five. That's that's better than getting the bootleg. Yo, hey, yo. <laughs> <laughs> yo, I didn't think of that. She's coming off of this turf, bro, on yo, the bootleg stuff. She's killing the game right now. She be right on Jamaica <laughs> Ave, killing it. Yo, she got bootleggers out here trying to get fucking screen print shirts now. Like, yo, damn. All right, y'all get with some fake ass Nicki Minaj shirts. Put these out, bro. She come up with a game. Nicki fucking yo, up the game so right it, now. It's the, it's the hypocrisy. It's crazy because it, 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 it's because she is now realizing that the, the kingdom that she developed was does not withstand what she thought it could withstand. She did not predict a Cardi B. She didn't predict that. Oh no! Because no. Uh, others had tried. She said it. She said it during the, uh, uh, the interview at Genius. I was there, and it was a great interview. My favorite interview from her too, because it's about Buzz. And she said they've tried to make another Nicki Minaj. They've tried to copy me and take me out. And it's true. There's been other rappers that have, sl- you know, kind of gotten in there and then didn't get the hit. I mean, the biggest one, Iggy Azalea, Azalea Banks. Those rappers who it looked like they were trying to take her spot, but could never get there. Right, Cardi came and did things that Nicki Minaj. Cardi does not have the longevity of Nicki Minaj at all. And Nicki Minaj said something that she said, "Wait until they have a few years to say that they to to, to, to pan me." You compare Steph Curry to Jordan? And I'm like, yeah, you do. Not for career, no, not for career, but you do compare them for single seasons. Right, nobody's calling because. It, at everybody, when everybody, people want to do, use the Michael Jordan comparison, here's one thing they have to understand. Michael Jordan hasn't played basketball in 15 years. So when you say you compare Steph Curry to Michael Jordan, yeah, of all time, you don't. But if you had to compare Michael Jordan right now, that's what you, right now, to Steph Curry, is he even, he doesn't even, he doesn't even in the conversation because he's not playing ball. It, right. It's not it's, the Michael it's, Jordan thing. It's totally different. You're you're totally you're different. thinking of games in cross eras and trying to to compare two different. I won't exactly. even say styles, but just aesthetics 
in in general. And one thing that Nikki really oversaw it was the fact that she was built on a lot of gimmick and she won't give it mm-hmm. any credit that yo you don't have any songs that jam that's the thing about cardi right now she has fucking jams and i'm gonna keep saying that shit because that's the difference between the the top tier artists and the ones who are just getting their streaming and touring money <clears throat> is they actually have jams you know a lot of dudes have nice songs like I said on the last one, Travis Scott got some jams. I see that shit playing for a little while. Um, Nikki has done so many missteps, even going back to her first single, Massive Attack. Mm. With oh, Sean oh. <laughs> the only thing I really remember from that song is the fact that you had Amber Rose in a a pink Ferrari or Lambo, mm. whatever it was. I don't even remember what type of car it was because it was that forgettable. The whole thing. And that, it made me question like, what the, what are they doing with her? Mm-hmm. And it just continued on. You know, Moment for Life was a good one. I'll give her that. <clears throat> but there's not one Nicki Minaj song that I would throw on any playlist of mine. Now, there are songs that I specifically go to because I love Nicki Minaj's part. Uh, mm-hmm. Coca-Cola. That, that is a great song. If you got six minutes to kill, turn on Gucci Mane Coca-Cola. Great I might as well check song. that out. It's on the Burr Print 3 HD. Or no, is okay. it 3D? I can't remember. He dropped like 12 mixtapes <laughs> <laughs> in like six weeks. It was ridiculous. I can't remember. Um... Then there's the monster verse with Kanye. Woo! Fire. And those are probably my top two. So those will make my list. But there are no Nicki Minaj songs. And this is not something that, you know, I have against like female artists or whatever, because I got plenty of Cardi songs that I would throw on my playlist. Mm-hmm. Uh but I I do think she lacks a lot of self awareness about what she is. Mm-hmm. And it's reflective in the fact that she does not collaborate with other artists, let alone female artists. Then you have to look at when you're one of those top tier artists, you have to grow branches just to have yourself uh, an extended play to, you know, maybe go into the next phase of your career. You know, she has no fruit bearing from her tree. Mm. as much as Drake has a lot of behind the scenes fruit growing you know Boy Wonder is a is a piece of fruit that he grew and now he's doing tracks for everybody uh, you know 40's out there mixing beats for people um, so on and so forth but the thing about Nicki is there's nobody remotely connected her to her that's relevant or looking to be you know, under that umbrella, like, oh, Nikki brought me up. There's none of that with her. And I think her not having that give back to the community and also the fact that she did not want to give little Kim any type of reverence on the fact that she stole her whole gimmick when she came out. I think she okay. get a little get back for all of her misgivings there. to the hip hop game. I'm sorry, CO. You my man. I've known you for years, years, and I love everything you're saying right now, except, and this is your personal opinion about no Nicki Minaj songs being your playlist. Me, I have a couple. I have a couple of her mixtape songs with Fire. She got, her mixtape shit was ridiculous. And she has a couple songs on her albums, too, like Four Door, Avent the Door, and Filling Myself with Beyonce. Uh, those, okay, this song, yeah. I, All right. No, those, those, I, those really do hit, but Yo, you know, just like with you know Beyonce, it's a little bit more energy that, with with. That's true. <laughs> but then with, with the little Kim thing, that's a complicated thing. Um, because what I what I've seen is that the beat started with little Kim because she was going to be on a song with her. Kim was going to be on a song with Nicki 
and Birdman. Uh, and then I guess Kim took herself off of the song, or maybe Nikki. One of the, one of the two took themselves off of the song, and that kind of made a little bit of a rift. And I and then I think that Nikki just took it a little bit too far. But she has definitely. If there's one thing Nikki's right about, a hundred percent that I will not put against her is that she has given reverence to other female rappers. She has given her reverence to the Little Kims, the Foxy Browns. That's also part of the reason why her meltdown now is so it's so fucked up is because she's caring about things that the people who she's compared herself to would never care about. She calls herself the female J. I can't remember. I, I, I can't remember the last time Jay Z oh. made a public fool of himself to expose so and not not because Jay Z doesn't expose things behind the curtains. He just knows when to do it. For example, he had, he had a title X show, uh, his B side show, still one of the best concerts I've ever seen. JD doing old shit, um, album cuts that we never that we never seen perform live. And then he had he had his freestyle where he where he spit about yo these streaming services are robbing us. Why would you want to go with them when they taking money from you instead of coming with me? He that could have been a tweet. That like if that was Nicki Minaj, right. that would have been ten tweets. JD was like, no 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 no, let me go on, let me do let me do my performance. On my platform, when the world's watching, and then I'll say it, and then I don't come off as bitter or have an agenda. I'll come off as, hmm, Hov is dropping knowledge for us. Nikki got Nikki could drop that knowledge, but the way she does it is very self-serving. It's very like, oh, if it's not helping me, I'll make an issue about it. But right. it, it's, it's, it's very me. Fifty Cent like in his early going. Yeah, very, very. There's no, there's no altruism. She wants to push this whole like I'm here for women empowerment and equality. Maybe that's about her. on a ten, on an ostensible level, but definitely not on any kind of tangible level. Like, look at her albums. She has Foxy Brown was the first female rapper on her album on a, on Nicki Minaj's album in either ever or in years. Yeah, that's ridiculous. And, and that's, like, come on, like. In this climate, and also, she's very, oh my God, she's so, her album is so tone deaf, it's crazy. You, we're in the Me Too movement. We're, we're in <laughs> the Time Up movement. We're in an era where it's like, yo, women are reclaiming their voices and speaking out about, against the oppression of the patriarchy. And what's Nicki Minaj rapping about? Good form. And, Ooh, daddy. And, oh, I'm going to have sex with this dude. And it's like, what you can do? Go right ahead. Right. And he's like, hey, Drake does it all the time. But I have the same criticism for Drake as the world burning burning up around him and you're basically just doing a party in the middle of the fire, hoping that people just forget about it. They still got to go outside to the fire. Right. Like, that's what Nicky's not doing. And that's why she failed. You know, Cardi's not doing it either. I, I, well, I, 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 okay. All right. Look, I, I didn't mean to cut you off, but like the, yeah, go ahead, go ahead. the the difference between what you're saying with Drake and with Nikki is, is Nikki is talking that shit in the interviews, but she's not bringing it to the music. Drake don't talk about that shit at all. Like, he ain't even about that shit. That's when the blackface <laughs> shit came up. Niggas was like, bro, what you talking about? we ain't trying to hear you ain't never said nothing about black anything and then you get hit with the black face and now you want to drop trump lines you know mm -hmm. we ain't buying you we're not buying it at all but i think there's a fundamental difference between what jay-z is and what Nicki minaj is and jay-z is very presidential in his presence you know from jump and it's his whole persona that you know i am the top nigga basically from from jump so it didn't surprise me that he would take a stage to give a message that he felt like was important for the industry nikki on the other hand is clearly a product that people have put together body parts and all and she is being packaged for you know great consumption not to say that she doesn't have any talent but there's definitely a lot of battery in her back to keep her gimmick going and yep. in order to generate revenue. And if we were in 
you know, the, the early days of streaming and, you know, where physical album sales still mattered much. I think Nikki would probably have much more impact because there would be a lot less room, mm -hmm. but she's clearly hasn't had strong enough music and everybody is like, well, that's just Nikki. You know, there's nothing exciting about it. So that's why I think her tour sales are sagging. Woo, horrible. And I feel bad, but I'm not surprised. There's, absolute, there's absolutely nothing that shocks me that you can't sell out a tour when you don't have any song to hit the radio with. Mm -hmm. Not one. Chun Li is cool to listen to, but it's not a jam. And I mean, it's not a jam. I mean, it, it did do okay. I think it did top ten on Billboard. It did, it did, it did shine. But I will say you're right. It's not one of those songs that can push an album. If she and people have been saying, if you drop Barbie Dreams first, this is a different album. This is a different. If you drop that Barbie Dream, which you're talking about all the different rappers, it, it does it does two things. I feel one, it it establishes in the fans mind that the first thing you want them to know is that you're dominant. And yeah. Amongst that's these that's men. a good point. And you are and you are amongst these men. And two, it's a it's a good rap song. Like I don't get why we can't I, I hate the fact that good rap songs and the, mind you, I think Chun Li's hot. I get I, I like her flow on that is fire, but then she says the worst things what the hell does Laura <laughs> Bancroft mean? I don't know. I don't know. Like, what does There's that so mean? many questions about Nicki Minaj lines. They they are. I don't know. We're we're going to have to find a new segment of what did they mean with this line. <laughs> Where that, yes, that's going to be please. a new segment going forward. Uh, shout out to the originator, Lil Flip. Do nothing like milk or chew you like milk. I do nothing to spoil you. I remember that. Never forgot. <laughs> I see you, little flip. Uh, but yeah, I think there's something to that because if you do the Barbie dreams, do the video, I think there's a lot more think piece type shit done around Nikki instead of the fuck is Nikki doing? Think mm -hmm. pieces. <laughs> and it's crazy that just looking at creative shit might get you better attention, but that's not the point. The point is to make as much money as possible. So of course they didn't go into the mode of let's find the, the thing that might get the blogs talking the most in the other direction. They didn't go for that. So mm -mm. I'm not surprised at all. Nikki, you might get it together soon. We'll see how long this, the young money cash money thing lasts. Uh, I don't know if they're I, loyal. It, it, I mean, she's going to be loyal, but at any point is the catalog going forward, going to be worth her expenses. Cause I'm sure it costs a bit much to, to keep up li little Nikki over there. And you know, what's crazy is that the album says are going to get worse. That's what I'm saying. Like, this is her, so this is a lowest selling album first week ever like in an era where everybody's like, having their biggest numbers like there's no way you can you can um like make that a like, compromise or two there's no, no there's no way because it's like every big artist of her stature the the jay-z's the rihanna's the drake's they have all had some of their biggest albums since the, you know, the streaming era has since, begun. Since the streaming, the streaming era, and not just streaming, but since the social media has matured into being a catalyst for consumption. You know, case in point, the whole Shiggy, the whole Shiggy, and how he helped propel in my feelings to a number one record. It would have eventually became number one, but maybe not that quick without Shiggy. But that's for another topic. All right. So speaking of uh, streaming, you had some thoughts that you brought to my attention. I was a little unaware of, but I knew about uh, was, you know, Buster Rhymes 
talking about hip hop having a union. Mm-hmm. And I thought that was a pretty good idea. So like, how did this pop up? Cause I haven't okay, seen this so, floating around anywhere. So me being the, the obsessive journalist that I am, I just love reading interviews. I love reading Q and A. I love reading interviews from like decades ago and just like finding things to talk about. Right. Right. So, so then I, I read it, uh, it is 1998, uh, Rolling Stone article. In the middle of it, just randomly, he says something about, uh, he, he mentions how during the NBA lockout of 1998, going into the 99 season, um, that he likes what the, what the players are doing. He likes the fact that the players are holding out, they're doing a lockout, they're not playing games, they're not giving them, these owners, what they want. So that, uh, and he said hip hop should do that too. He said hip hop should have bended that. And his exact, uh, quote is, if we all got a similar agenda, why not pull together, get a little account, we all pay the union dues. When one nigga gets fucked over at a label, we all take some money from the union dues and go out of the country, relax, vacation, and treat each other to the pina coladas and live, party all day by ourselves. When they come to terms, then we resurface. So then 20 years later, I had, I mean, I, I, I got a chance to talk to them for hip hop and more, and I asked him about it, and I was like, yo, Buster, like, do you think that's supposed to happen? And he's still saying, yes, it can happen. Because um, the same way how uh, the, the SAG um, Screen Actors Guild Association, which is for actors, writers, and people in, in television and movies, how they did that. There was a writer strike. And they made sure that these writers did not go to work. I think, it was, I think it was 08, 07, 08. These writers did not go to work for a lot of these shows until they got better pay. They were getting paid like shit. And they said, we need to get better pay or we're not giving you that, that quality. Hip hop artists, it, it could be a bit, a bit more difficult because of the fact that hip hop artists, a lot of them owe record labels money. In a sense of, like, if, if, if a teacher, if teachers want to go on strike, right. they're just not, they're just not going to get that paycheck. Correct. You know, they're not going to get that paycheck. It doesn't mean that the, that the school is going to be losing out on more than just teachers, which is bad. But they're not going to be losing out on somebody recouping them for a certain fee. Most record, most rappers have to make back the advance money. They have to make back um, the album budget. They, got, they, they, they are obligated to do certain things. Now, if it, if it, to do this union thing, he said that it would have to be something where uh, the artists pay dues, but without thinking about it. It had to be something where it's like just a, a fundamental priority. The same way. So the same way how when you buy something, it's automatically taxed. You don't get to right. choose. You don't get the option. It's automatically done. He thinks it should be that um, intrinsic. Um, and the only, the only I see that happen is if they sign up for something. If an artist sign up and say, I will voluntarily give a portion of my of every check to this union for certain protection. Now, can that happen? I think so. I really do. I, I feel like any creative industry where... Um, there are workers appeasing higher lords or higher executives. There could be a union because what a union does, especially for hip hop, is it protects the artist from becoming just product. And a lot of times these artists are treated as just the product and not the manufacturers. It's different. The artists, the artists are not the product. The artists are the manufacturers. The record labels are just partners in that manufacturing process. Right, you know, they're the distribution. They, they're distribution, and they also are the manufacturers too, because they do put them in in, in the. Um, Correct. They they are a part of the started. process of making it. Exactly, but they aren't the ones making it. Right. If 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 Travis Scott did not make Asher World, Asher World would not be made. They would not be some other Asher World. It, it just wouldn't be made. They wouldn't have the, they wouldn't have the thought process to make this. So what what artists should do is to definitely band together. Once your deal is up. Renegotiate it. And if enough artists can renegotiate their deal, this union thing can happen and they can have a lot of benefits. Case in point, um, I didn't know if you see this, um, that 12.5% of uh, revenue. I'm numbers. Yeah, it's my bad. 12.5% of like the $45 billion, I think, that came from, uh, record labels or came from the, from the music industry came to artists. 
Only 12%. The rest went, to, went elsewhere to record labels, to promoters, to other things. And 43% of all revenue last year came from streaming music. So what that tells me is that record labels have figured out a new way to fuck artists. They figured out a new way to fuck artists. Because now, the whole thing was that streaming was fracturing the, um, the industry. It was making too many different tiers of how people put to get money. They didn't know how to count um, streams. It just now started to um, lower the value of a free stream as opposed to a paid stream. So it's just so that's going to automatically change the way people do their measurements. So it was like, luckily, we didn't know what they were yeah. doing at first. But now they figured it out. And these motherfuckers don't want to give up their money. So what that does is that artists, and most of the money that artists get are from touring. You know what I mean? From touring and merchandise. So that means that if they're not doing shows, they're not getting paid. So all these artists you see out, that SoundCloud popping and all that stuff, and you haven't seen a show from them, those rappers are not as good off as you think they are. They got the chain. They got the free swag from Puma uh, at the gift shop. Uh, you know, they, they got the gift bags and stuff. So they dressed in that. But until they start touring, they're not going to really be seeing that good money. And I think that that's something that needs to happen. I feel like it's too, hip hop is too big. Jay-Z, Jay-Z said it in the Rap Radar interview last year. They built all of this shit. Hip is popular to music in the world. So they made- Finally got the numbers to prove that shit too. You've been numbers. on this it's, shit. You ain't believe it. It's been that way. It's been that way. It's just that hip hop artists didn't, or hip hop fans didn't buy albums. That's just, that's just the fact of the matter. They didn't buy albums, but they do listen to music more than anybody. You know what I mean? They're the only ones who will listen to a 535 song Little B mixtape. Or, you know, <laughs> uh, mix yeah, we'll, yeah, we'll do that. I don't see many Garth Brooks albums that long that people are listening to. Nah. See, hip-hop is, a, is about uh, obsessive compulsion to always never be satisfied with new music. You always want more. So once the streaming came about, it was a, it was a done deal. It was going to be number one it's not going to stop at all. So that means that we should get more equity. And I say we, because I feel like we are a part of the hip-hop culture. They should get more equity. And I think the union can work if it's done right. And it's not done for some vanity shit. A rapper saying, look, I did it. But they're not going to take care of it. We need, a, we need a Chris Paul and a LeBron James to do what they did with the, with the okay. NBA PlayStation and really take that shit serious. Not just some... Yeah, man, I'm swagged out. I, 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 I don't want. I, I don't want these future being you know, like on IG Live, like yo, nigga, look at this chain, man. This is from the fucking union boss of all the rappers. This is me. It's gotta be. A, it's gotta be an independent party who has no interest in being swagged out or has no interest in being over any rappers. So it has to be somebody who's like an executive. So maybe like a Jay Z, maybe like a Kevin Lyles, yeah. or maybe. Someone like that. Okay. You have this man like that because it, it can't be a rapper. Can't, it, it, it's a few, it's like a handful of rappers that it, it, that it could be because, because of the fact that hip hop is, is different than any other thing. Uh, hip hop is, is, is purely competitive of one person against another person. Right. Basketball is competitive, but they make it a money where it's like, so what? <laughs> like, wh- like, I'm not going to, I don't want you to not have that job. I don't want you to, I don't want you to win the ring. Right. But I want you to get that job. You're going to still get $25 million with or without a ring. You're not going to get that kind of money with or without a, without a hit. And, and, and so it's like there's a little bit more competition in hip-hop than it is in basketball. So I would say that there needs to be somebody who's an independent counsel. Uh, and I would, I would love to let up those, those bylaws. And, and, and um, before I stop, it was actually one thing that happened. Um, it reminded me of something. Um, I think Irvin Gotti said that him, Dame Dad, I believe it was Dame Dad, him, Dame Dad, and Suge Knight. So it was him, Dame, it was either him, Dame Dad, and Suge Knight, or him, Jay Prince, and Suge Knight was going to start their own distribution company. Mm. Meaning, they, meaning, they, meaning they was going to come together, put the money together, and make it so that they didn't have to rely on the major labels to, to get the distribution that they need. And for some reason, that fell apart. I mean, it fell apart because Suge Knight one, was involved. Irvin Gotti, no, no, Shirley Knight, and also Earl Gotti, if you remember, he was on investigation from the feds too, with because his connection with the brain. Yeah, uh, that was really what. That's what that's what really took down Murder Inc. Man, I mean, it was, right. it was it was it was fifty cent, but then at the same time, the FBI, the Alphabet Boys came in, 
and went through their whole shit, and they couldn't really put out music. They had to, have to fight in mm. court. And Damn. during that time, it huh. just swept up. Huh. Uh, yeah. Is there a little money washing there? Huh. <laughs> I, I wonder where. Hey, man. Is. I don't know that. You know, I don't know if you watch Power much, but uh, I, it has some uh, some light tennis you there. But mm-hmm. uh, no question. I, I'm glad I let you, you know, clear out an ISO ball for about seven minutes so you could really get that out because it gave me some time to really break down the fundamental issues that would stop a union in hip hop from happening. <clears throat> and it's not anything uh, that that can't be overcame by just, you know, actual effort. Uh, but it's basically, you know, mirroring the stuff that's in the black community. Uh, and that's because it's a lot of crab in the bucket mentality. You know, we yeah. can't get out of our own way because for the most part, a lot of the artists are coming from absolutely nothing. So when they just get a taste, they're going to sign up quick. And I mean, say what you want. Lil Yachty didn't know what type of deal he had. He got a 360 deal, but he had no idea what he was signed to. He just knew he went from popping on SoundCloud to having a record deal. And it still hasn't changed. That tells you right then and there, artists can still get fucked in a contract real easily because nobody's actually taking time to get educated. And the reason why the white counterparts and the other genres of music aren't getting hit as hard is because there's more of an establishment for uh legal backing and making sure everything is correct that's just the standard yeah. operating procedure when you have yeah. you know guys really come straight off the street they don't really know nothing about it they just going to get the cash you know they look mm-hmm. at it as a hustle and then you got other people that love the music and they're like well if you're gonna give me a chance that you know, amplify it, then, you know, let's do it. And they don't really care that much. Um, so that's one thing I think we had to get over for that to happen. The other thing is in order for the union to have a real head, the, the management level would have to be in line with it. Meaning, I guess, like representation, like the agents and also the, I guess you would say the black owned labels, you know, the people who are actually knee deep in it. So yes, if Jay-Z 50 cent, um, you know, baby face, uh, what's your boy name? What, what's the face? I'm, I'm blanking. Oh, uh, Dude from the face. Baby. Uh, oh, 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 L.A. Reed. L.A. Reed. Yes, thank you. L.A. Reed, my guy. Epic Records. I, um, I think he left Epic. He's going to start his own thing, which is a good thing. He might start his own management company and then do what you're saying he should do. Right. So we need an L.A. Reed. We need all of this, all of these executive conglomerates to actually push it down toward the other levels and almost make it a requirement thing that you get aboard. And then also the other obstacle is uh, the ASCAP and BMIs. You know, they're actually going to have to be in involved in the making sure that everybody's getting paid correctly because that's where we're publishing. So there's a lot of moving parts that have to get handled in order for that shit to get right. And you could say like, well, uh, we could just stop making the music and then maybe make our own publishing. But then that, then like going back and forth between who owns what and what you can do with what that would get really hairy, really fast. And I think there would, there would be so many different lawsuits going back and forth and who has money mm-hmm. for the best lawyers. So there's a lot of things going on in, in order for that to really get some momentum that would have to get worked out. It would have to start as, and I, I don't want to go too far on this because you, 
a body bag and some tires and shit like that. <laughs> I gotta do that. Uh, but it would have to start with a uh, show and show me, and then I'll follow. Right. It, it, it won't be some. It won't be some mass adoption where, like, with title with Jay Z, like, here's these thirty part owners of title. You should all come to title, and they're like, ah, you're you're just a streaming service. At the end of the day, so I'm gonna go to all the other streaming services too. Hold, hold on, um, hold on. Hey, title. I I had the app for a while. I was paying for it. This shit suck in my car. That's all I'm gonna say. Big title, problem. I'm not yo. You always bait me into these deep topics. <laughs> Let me just say that title is and has been for a while the best streaming service out because. Of a few facts that nobody that here's the thing about it. Nicki Minaj wants to talk about some kind of smear campaign against her. There's an actual, but I I don't want to get implicated in anything. But I I have knowledge that there has been a behind the scenes campaign against titles to a certain extent by the journalist community, especially the music journalist community, uh, largely because one Apple Music. Made sure to swoop in and get and give a couple of um, publications that bag to be like, all right, you gonna do our editorial content? You be gonna partner with you to do playlists too? They did, they did that from mm. jump, like from jump, like from jump. Fader's a part of them. Not saying Fader's comp, not saying not saying that, that Fader is compromised, but Fader, you can go look for it. Yeah, referring to the Apple Fader dot com. Yeah, search the Fader for title, and I guarantee you, you won't see. You'll maybe see one positive article about some title did. What you will see is them being funny and saying, Hey, don't forget to cancel your title subscription now that you got, now that everything, um, is love is on Spotify. They, or, or it's now on Apple Music. They'll put that to, to mm. protect the home team. But they, but what they won't tell you is that title was the first streaming service, not music, not music. They were the first streaming service in the world. Subscription streaming service to offer offline video download. The first, before Netflix, before all of them, they were the first ones to do that. They offered offline video download, which now is standard. Now it's a huge, now it's like if you don't have that, it's like, you're what are you up. doing? Title is the only streaming service that has consistently live streamed festivals and events. The only streaming service for the past three years to consistently do that. I mean, and they're the, they're the only, and they do the best job of promoting their podcast. Beats One is too is the problem with Beats One is that it's so it's, it's like everything from Apple. It's so closed in. It's so like if you don't have Apple and if you don't have an app product, you're not going to be able to experience this. I'm sorry, you need you need an iPhone or a MacBook to really experience this thing. <laughs> yeah, Yo. you have an Android too. But it's just not geared towards that. But let me, but that's for a whole, see, you see how you beat my ass to that shit? But let me just say one thing that it, it, in terms of the union thing, it's going to have to be a show and prove thing. It's going to have to be the biggest artists that can do it are going to have to subsidize some smaller artists. Um, yeah. To show them that it could happen. If all the artists see is Jay Z, Beyonce, Drake, Kendrick Lamar, Eminem saying, hey guys, we're standing up to the label and we're starting a union. It's going to be like, yeah, because you can afford it. You've been in the game for 10, 12, 20 years. This is true. You, that's not who you want. You want the six nines. You want the um, little babies. You want the Travis Scotts. You want the dudes that are just now getting their um, popularity off the ground right. and they're coming to some money that they're coming to some money well, amigo, that they've never amigo. seen before. Right. You want the Migos. Like, honestly, Migos, Travis Scott, and I would say, uh, what's their name? And Cardi B. If those three artists are not a part of some sort of new union, it's not going to work. Like, okay. they have to be a part of it. I, I see where you're going. I see they where you're going. show the artists. Yeah. They got to show them that it's going to work. And what that's going to entail is that Jay-Z and the big guys are going to have to front the bill. For the first year, they got to front yeah. some of the bill because it's not going to be coming in. Also, these artists aren't going to be agreeing to give you up that much money because they still got record label contracts 
meaning that they already are getting a small piece of the pie, and now you want them to give a piece of that small piece to you, you're going to have to subsidize and be like, all right, for the first year, your dues are like, I don't know, I, I don't want to give a, a number, but like, I guess $2,000 a month, I guess. Something like that. It'll probably be higher because you need a lot more money, but $2,000 a month, and then the next year, it'll be like five to $6,000 a month because they got to subsidize so much stuff. Um, and if that, but I think it works. I think because of what Jay's been talking about and what he's always been talking about, about financial freedom, and Diddy has to be a part of it. All of the black yes, yes. billionaires, that moguls have to be a part of it. They have to. If they're not, it, it sends the wrong signal. Okay. It sends the wrong signal. And I, all right, I'm going to add another layer to it. They will also no, need, okay there's also going to need to be some private equity. In order to make that shit really go, but okay. and we're going, we're talking multiple billions of dollars. So it would be nice if you could go to Michael Jordan, LeBron James, and Tiger Woods and be like, "You want to have a stake in bringing the music industry back to us? Why don't you go ahead and help?" But then you could also find somebody who might be a little bit more passionate about the music or just with who would like the opportunity to see it grow, you know, exponentially and get almost like some VC type of investment in the, what's going to be coming next. So I think if you add some of those factors together, there is some hope, but I, I think you're very correct when you say that, like Migos, Travis Scott, Cardi B of that wave. If we're going to be bankrolling some of the stuff that they have going to keep their momentum, because once we start going in this new direction, your momentum is going to be stunted. And there's nothing that we can do besides, you know, putting a band aid on it yourself and just try to DIY it. So, yes, there. Somebody is going to have to step up and and help everybody else. But that 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 is a great topic. So is that interview with Buster Rhymes out yet, or is it coming out soon? Yes, it's out. It's, it's out. out. Yeah, hiphopandmore.com. dot com. I'll share the link. Like once this is out, I'll share the link with this. Okay, with, with and I'll make sure it's in the this. show notes. And I'll go check yeah, that man. out and and definitely tell us what you think. Um, so we are at the end of the show and I would like to introduce a new segment called shit that I miss. <laughs> and because I'm a father of three work full time job, I do not get the chance to peruse the internet like most people do this these days. And someone who, uh, consumes a lot of media it's still a lot that you can miss so i'm going to go back a little bit and i gave you a little heads up but it gave me an excuse to talk about this shit so true life who was signed to rockefeller went to jail you know of course after he took cameron's rockefeller chain uh unrelated comes out of jail signs with future now i'm late to the party on this totally went under the radar i didn't even know i had no idea so i went back i saw a little bit after that there's a dj clue song with true life and future and true life comes on that shit and he has a, a bar where he said I get even with odd numbers, three, five, sevens, and nines. I was like, ooh. Mm. He ain't lose a step. I was like, okay, mm. let's get it. Yeah. So nah, I was like, like... <laughs> going off that, I was like, okay, let, let, let's let's see what else is here. So, I, And the only reason I got to that in the first place was the baddie video for him in future. And I was like, I wonder, is he going to rap or is he going to be auto-tuning? Now, in this song, he was auto-tuning. The DJ Clue song, he was just rapping. But either way, he is signed to free bands. He is a an artist under Future 
that does not sound like future. And I think that is so fucking important for yeah. someone like future to branch out and get artists who are not the same exact thing. Because as you can see, the game is littered with people who sound like future, mm -hmm. not like true life. And the fact that no. true life has enough, uh, credentials, you know, signing to Jay Z is, that's not a small thing. You, you, you had something when you signed to him, you know, you might've not put, been able to put it all together, but coming back. 2018 and it's it's been a slow burn so i'm i'm waiting for the payoffs because it's you know there's only been like drip drops a song here a song there you know not a full-fledged mixtape ep not a uh you know back-to-back -back future and true life mixtape that future is mm -hmm. uh notorious for i mean going back to you know days with gucci <clears throat> he's always doing tapes with everybody so i'm i know it's going to be one eventually but i think that if we don't have more of this type of shit going on then artists will eventually play themselves out because they can't find other ways to grow and i think having somebody like true life in future's corner will give him a little bit more perspective on different ways to do shit and put words together because I mean, we know him, we've heard this nigga, he can rap like no questions. So I'm, I'm curious to see that. And the number two thing is I really want to bring up is how we ingest media and why I missed this in the first place. So Keith, let me ask you a quick question and then I'm gonna wrap my shit up. How long do you stay on Twitter? <laughs> what do you mean? Like, like, like in one, one like, session or like... Yeah, like one session. Uh, I guess on average, and one just sitting and not leaving, not leaving the app or leaving the, the platform, I would say 15 minutes. 15 minutes, okay. At a time, yeah. The longest. All right. On now, average, let, let, me, let me expand that. Now, how much time do you spend reading articles that you find on Twitter? No, I spend like at least five, like three or four hours. Three or four hours. So really you spend about three or four hours on Twitter. It's just, you're not interfacing with Twitter the entire time. Yes. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's definitely true. Uh -huh. Okay. So, all right. This, this is a very interesting thing that I have found to be the difference between people who really are in it who like who knew what twitter was at the beginning and what twitter has become now <clears throat> because before twitter became the best curation spot for whatever you was into so whether it was sports music movies celebrities whatever you was into you could curate it on twitter and find the best news in the current climate Twitter is basically eating its own tail because stuff that happens on Twitter becomes news on Twitter, becomes a blog post on a website that the website then shares on Twitter. And somehow we wonder how stuff gets under the radar. It's because we're just sh sharing the same information over and over and over and over again shout out beast mode <laughs> and that's how i miss something like the true life because there wasn't a lot of fanfare or controversy there wasn't a person that he was dating you know there wasn't uh nothing just he got out of jail and he signed the future but for whatever reason, journalistically, that's not important. But I think that's a pretty big thing for future itself, as you can see from the last few minutes I've been talking. So that's my shit that I missed this week. I missed that too, uh, completely. It, it, I mean, it came out a year ago, 
that he got that he got signed and it came out of the work. I think it came out like summer of 2017. And I'm like, yes, it was too much. It was too much going on. Too much. Like it, how much was shit was much. going on when a nigga like True Life gets out of jail and signs to one of the biggest rappers in the game. Well, here's the thing about it. True Life lost his like his stature over time because what happened with True Life was that he got I think he got out of jail either a year before he signed with Future or just months before. One of the two. But True Life his entire um uh, popularity was based on beef. That was that like that, that, that what it was. His whole popularity when it comes to why people even are saying true life and caring was his incredible beef with Dipset. You know what I mean? Well, yeah, that that, that, that was the I guess like the he made good music. He yeah. made good music, but let's not act like we were sitting here waiting with bated breath for his arrival because I don't okay. think people I, were. I'll give you that. Okay. Yeah, but I think what you did say about um. Future science might doesn't sound like him is very fascinating because rappers don't do that. Like if a, or most rappers who sign artists sign artists that they like J Cole. J Cole's not going to sign some trap rapper. He might sign a guy who's trap adjacent, right? Like a J like a JID. He might sound something like that, but they're going to be conscious no matter what. Every rapper on Dreamville is conscious. That's their that's their brand. It's conscious, even if it's conscious hood shit. Um, who else? Uh, I had something in my head too. Uh, uh, quality control. Almost all of those rappers sound the same. They're all that's the like, same. That's a, like, like that's a factory. You build in a factory, you build in a brand. Uh, so the fact that the fact that in Drake, last but not least, Drake the OVO. There's no rapper signed to Drake yet. No, it's, it's a it's a production a house. Rapper, it's a hit it's making house. house. That's what that and is. All of them sound, and all of them have that Drake sound. All had a variation of the mid tempo, somber, heavy eight oh eight um Drake sound that they've mixed and matched the singing, rapping, the hip hop and R and B mixture. Every one of them have that. There is no rapper who is there is no artist on OVO that is that is doing horrorcore. There is no artist on on there that's doing uh socially conscious music. It's always the same thing. So the fact that future who who didn't sign somebody completely different than him? It's still a dude talk about the streets, talk, talk about the, you know. Yeah, the this, okay, this is true, but it doesn't matter. It's the same, but the style is very different, especially since he's a guy. Since Future is one of the biggest rappers out of Atlanta, and he decides to sign a New York cat. Just, you know what I mean? So, like, to me, <laughs> that that is the biggest journalistic point that I I would have liked to see explored a little bit more, just to have some type of anticipation of what is this going to be? Mm -hmm. Nobody even asked the question. I'm curious as fuck because I'm, I'm, just, I'm a music head. I'm a hip hop head. And mm -hmm. all the stuff you said was true about true life. But like we've explored is he can rap. He's he, yeah. he was good enough to sign to Jay Z who is still relevant right now. And yeah. I, I just don't get it. Like how you have the words, you know, former Jay Z artist signs with Future. Like let's let's <laughs> dig, let's yeah, dig. Yeah that's, <laughs> yeah, that's true. That's a good point. That's a very good point. He oh. had the cachet, and it should have been bigger than like it definitely should have been bigger than what it was. I don't know. Maybe, but maybe. hopefully, Future can help that. But also, it got kind of stuck under the rug because. Future was on his own solo takeover shit with the two albums. And, like, he was pushing that heavy, so he probably didn't have enough time for that. And now, and I think that's going to be the problem for the benefit of somebody signed the Future, is that Future's not going to ever stop making music. And we've seen what happens when you have an artist who is not just active in the game, but has a desire to be one of the most relevant at all times in terms of music. You saw what happened with Jay-Z and, 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 and Rockefeller. As much people love Jay-Z and Rockefeller and that whole thing, Jay-Z was not good at pushing other rappers. No. Nah. He was he, he always he always had the mindset of if I get hot, that means you get hot. 
It, it's the Kobe that's Bryant the syndrome. It's like, why you can't do yeah. what I do? Yeah, exactly. That's why the dynasty went from being a rocket for the population album to being a Jay-Z album. It's like, yeah, if I do, if it's my album, we're going to get way more, which is a, a good point, but it, it stunts their growth, i.e. a Memphis Bleak, where it's like, oh, I'll put Dear Summer on your album. It'll get it more popularity. Yes, but it's going to paint the perception that I'm nothing but your boy. That's like, it, do you not get that. Like, does nobody ever get that? Like, you put a song on my album that is better than every song on my album. <laughs> what the hell do you think is going to happen? Right. And you have a verse, and you have a verse on that same album. You already got a verse. Mm, like, mm, mm. It, it's just, it's, it's same thing with Nas. Nas is, but Nas is doing a better job with Dave East. But I feel like it's less Nas than it's more just Dave East being a beast. That's it. it. That's that's really what it is. And I don't think it was, I don't think Nas is doing a Nas lot of, is not really helping him push because if Nas was helping him push, I would then that would mean that Nas would be able to help him pick producers and I don't think Nas could do that. Straight up. That's true. Yeah. Like yeah. I mean, what is his percentage on picking beats on album? Like, you know, thirty percent? Not good. You know, I, I don't know where he's going to help him musically. Like, Nas does one thing. Bars. That's it. What else you got? He's good musically, but bars. He doesn't like good beats. That's not that's not a Nas feature. You know, just, but wrapping up on this, if the only time that I really appreciated Nas's beat selection is on the Untitled Slash Nigger yeah. album. Yes. Like, God damn it. That shit, bang. Underrated great album. Underrated great album. Fucking Cool and Dre, uh, DJ Toon. Jelly Shine Like That. Uh, DJ Green Lantern, Polo uh, to Dawn. It was oh sick. God. That was a sick album. That was a sick production wise. That album was amazing. I will give it. Overall, the album was amazing. Like, overall, it was, it is one of the most underrated albums. We we're gonna have to do like an anniversary on that one yeah. or something or figure yeah, I don't know sure like a this underrated I mean, list. I just need an excuse to talk about the nigger album. Yeah, yeah. man. I, I I like the hat the fact that he had his wig. He had his wifey um at the Grammys, um Khalees wearing a nigger nigger jacket. I yeah. fucks with that. Has he mad niggerish. Hey. That's all I'm gonna say. It's and mad niggerish. The whole, the whole like we ain't ready for a black president song. Man, he had, yo, that album was fire, man. Yes, it was fire. Like that, that's not. Let's stop it right there. Yeah, we, we, stop we, it. Will, we will, we will, we will visit that, that later. Let's wrap up the show, man. Anything else you got for the people before we get out of here, man? Uh, basically, um, look out for this artist named Aaron A. He's a dope ass artist. Uh, look out for a lot of like I'm gonna be. My pens are gonna be hitting the pad a lot more. So J U S A I R E on Twitter, Instagram, you gonna see some stuff. Cause follow me. Um, I'm not sure when this is coming out. It might come out tomorrow. I don't know. If not, whenever it comes, either look out for or look back and see my Afropunk coverage because Afropunk is happening this weekend or it's happening on August 26th, 27th. Sure enough. Well, well, 20, 20, 20, 20, 26th. And Afropunk is every year black heaven. It is the most beautiful black people listening to the most beautiful black music surrounded by in, in the heart of Brooklyn. Like next to the project. Not, 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 not in the gentrified. Or, I mean, it's near it. I, I keep it real. It, it is so near it's, it's not next to the Whole Foods? It's, uh, it's, it's in walking distance. You, 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 get, you, you, get, you, you get an eye for carrot toast. You okay. gotta walk a little bit further. But, if, but when you come out of the, you come out of Commonwealth Bay, Bay Park in Brooklyn, you see project buildings. Okay. You see All real right. people. So I fucked with Adam Park, and it's gonna be a crazy line of Daniel Caesar, her, Tyler the Creator, Eric Badu, Janelle Monet, the internet, Ooh, uh, Jesse Reyes, so Ryan Babe, Yuna, uh, Just Blaze, Patronata, like it's going to be in Denzel right. Curry. So, Smino. Well, like it's gonna be an insane concert, and check it out. You know what that sounds like? That sounds like if you're not afraid of, uh, 
what's the word I want to say? I, I want to pick my words very carefully. Because, I don't know, confidence is not the right word. It's like it's like a cross between confident and sturdy. But a black woman, a black woman who's just all about herself. Mm-hmm. If you're not afraid of that, you should meet a nice woman at that concert. No question. Yes. You know, not a lot of thoughts at that concert. That's all I'm going to say. You, you know, you, <clears throat> uh, yo, you can, now, yo. now you might get some, you might get some thought action if you got the game right, but that's a whole nother subject. I'm not going to put nothing out there. But Afropunk gives the atmosphere for the sophisticated black woman to turn up in a sophisticated way. Cause you're not turning up. Okay. There, there we go. Stuff. Sophisticated. It's I a, like that one. Go with that. You're not trying to have some dark ass club with bottles popping and you can barely hear the music. No, 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 no. You're outside amongst other people who, and also, one part about our punk is that everybody dresses up. This is their prom. This okay. Is their, so, oh, their so everybody's getting a new outfit. Yeah. The outfits I've seen, I saw a woman one time with nothing but like, like shoe, a shoestring bra and shoestring like, uh, underwear. And an afro, and was walking around, and she was one of like dozens that were dressed <laughs> like that. Afro punk is when the the purity of the human body, of the naked body, is on display, and those women are are the ones that you carry in articulate conversation. Got a little bit of swab, a little swab to it. Yo, you can pull some baddies, man. I pulled, I pulled. Uh, a sophisticated, nice, you know, 401k. But right out, right after the um show, right after the show, it was on. I won't get into detail because I don't kiss and tell, but I didn't get Apple Punk. Let me just say that. I didn't say that. Like, yeah. Right after, yeah. She saw D'Angelo, D'Angelo was done, and the mood was right. So, I'm just saying. Shout out to that boy Q Nelson Jr. for coming and kicking with me on the podcast once again. Y'all can follow him on Twitter, uh, Just Air. That's J U S A I R E. You can follow me at CL The Main Event on Twitter, at The Rundown South for the, the show and the website. And that pretty much goes for any other social platform like Facebook or Instagram and such. Uh, got anything you want to add to the show? CL at the rundown.com. And I'm looking to get a few more journalists involved in what I'm trying to do. So if you have a narrative that needs a little bit of a push, you let me know. I want to start getting more people involved. But, uh, I do appreciate y'all listening. And uh, I'm out here. Peace.